Coming up next on the Nutritional Advantage. And even to get to my leanest, are y'all ready for this? Fruits and vegetables, I don't eat them. Like, I can't tolerate them most of the times. If they aren't making you feel well, if they aren't serving you well, they're not for you. There are several, several clients that I have that have the vegetable toxicity, the fructose sensitivity, inability to process nuts or seeds, inability to process grains. And this is why we truly embrace the unicorn theory is the fact that everybody requires something different. You were born with natural digestive enzymes. If you're constantly eating different foods all the time, just think your body has to go into overtime and recalibrate your gut microbiome, recalibrate your digestive enzymes, and your body doesn't know what to anticipate. So Melissa, did you ever think that you would be here sitting talking with me on this amazing opportunity of the nutritional advantage? No. I mean, it was what, a year and a half ago now that we had our very first conversation. And when I look back at what has happened in the last year and a half, never in my wildest dreams. So when we think of the nutritional advantage, what we want to consider is the voice that we want to be able to project to everyone and understanding what proper nutritional practices are and how many are misconstrued. So go ahead and tell me your story about a year ago when I got started with you, some of the things that you may have struggled with. Yeah. So, I mean, really before our very first consultation call for about 10 years, I had been trying to figure out what was going on with my digestive system and chronic inflammation. And I can't say that I've tried everything that's possibly out there, but I had tried a lot of things that a lot of people have probably heard of from intermittent fasting to programs like Weight Watchers and Beachbody and trying shakes for mycogenics and gone to doctors and had every test run on me that they could think of. And everyone just kept saying, you're healthy, you're healthy, everything's good. That's the good news. And I kept looking at the doctor saying, right, but I don't feel well. You were the first person in a long time who actually believed that there was something that could be done and that we could find a solution together. And this is what we like to call the unicorn theory. So when we talk about the unicorn theory, something that we always want to project is everyone has different metabolic rates. Everybody has different genetic types. Everyone has different requirements in terms of dietary needs. What are you naturally deficient in, in terms of vitamin and mineral deficiencies? What is something that you have a surplus in for your body? So identifying that the human body has unique symptoms that are very relevant to each individual person. So so in a sense, everyone is like their own unicorn. Now, when we dive into health and wellness, uh, most people truly don't identify that they have food sensitivities or any allergies, let alone. So the fact that you have to get past that barrier of denial and true acceptance of what your body is truly capable of in terms of metabolizing foods, you know, and whether you are a performance athlete, putting a lot of, you know, effort in towards, um, you know, helping your body metabolize foods, or if you're more of a sedentary person. So in your experience, um, what were some things that you feel like had helped once you had started on a custom nutrition program? Well, I think one of the biggest things was like having a coach, having someone tell me that we were going to figure this out and we were going to do it together and that it wasn't going to be perfect. Like just knowing it wasn't going to be the like flip of a switch, like a lot of these other programs promised or, you know, just eliminate this one thing and magic's going to happen. Right. So for me, I think it, it hit home when I got my first meal plan from you and it was all like real food. So it, yes, it's this balance of protein, carbs, and fats, but it was all real food. Like nothing was packaged, nothing was processed. And I knew that I felt better on those things, but then, you know, we would go through and I started really like being in tune with my body 
And when you taught me like, okay, if you're having a disruption right here, we need to look back at what you ate three or four hours ago, not necessarily what like just happened, right? And just starting to have this communication, not only with my body, but take that feedback and give it to you and you knew what to do with it. Like it was so refreshing to not be doing it on my own, to not be playing the guessing game and know that I had you in my corner and that we were gonna figure it out together. That piece of custom nutrition and having a plan or knowing that someone's like advocating for you and someone does have the answers and they wanna help you solve it. Like, I remember apologizing to you, like, I'm sorry, but this thing didn't work. And you're like, I need feedback. I need you to tell me what doesn't feel good. That was so refreshing, so refreshing. And like, I didn't even know that was coming. And the one thing that I can ask for is that each and individual person that I work with has that amazing communication. They have the ability to read into their body and um, get into the problem solving you know, mode where we are literally solving your symptoms. You know, where do your headaches come from? Where does GI distress come from? Where is all the symptoms that we receive on a daily basis? How can they be solved? So when you get into problem solving mode and you have amazing communication, you are easily able to adapt to those situations. And something that's very critical with our health and wellness is understanding who our influences are. And when we evaluate different influences that we have, whether they are our parents, whether they are the media, social media, our friends, anytime we're looking at influences, you have to ask yourself, do those influences have the specific data on your body? And most likely that answer is going to be no. So not saying that an allergy test or a sensitivity test is going to solve all your problems, but it is great evidence to have, you know, to help you in the right direction. So there is a step-by-step process one needs to take in order to truly identify the response system to foods. And understanding that influences are a huge component. When it comes to eating dinner at the family table, we have to look at that from a different perspective. You know, not everyone at the dinner table is going to be requiring the same dietary needs. So if you're going to have an Italian dish for a family and you have dad that's gluten sensitive, mom that's, you know, olive oil sensitive, one of the kids is beef sensitive and another child is oregano sensitive, then you have to redefine what your shopping cart is from the standpoint of selecting a gluten free pasta, then looking at an avocado oil instead of an olive oil, maybe using turkey instead of beef and an oregano free seasoning. Now you have a dish that everyone is going to feel amazing after. And even asking the questions to your children on how does that food make you feel versus how does that food taste? So we're not teaching our children to be in a state of food glorification. It, we're basically teaching them to eat foods for the way that they make you feel. And that is something that I feel is very important. And even on your journey, you know, eating foods for the way that you feel, that's how we solved a lot of your symptoms. You know, was there one time specifically that you remember where it, like the light bulb had just clicked and you're like, wow, this makes so much sense, you know, prior to my life? Yeah, I remember so through through the years, you know, before you and I started working together, I had done a lot of eliminating on my own. Um, when I eliminated gluten, I saw tremendous progress. You know, a lot of my joint inflammation really went away. I mean, I, it did. Like, there was a remarkable difference. But then I still had belly bloat all the time. So then I eliminated dairy. And I started to see some difference there. But it wasn't as tremendous. Um, but I always kept corn, right? Like most people who try to eliminate gluten, like corn tortillas and corn tortilla chips, like these are all your, these are your backup, right? Like there's a lot of processed stuff and gluten-free products. So it was like a corn tortilla is more wholesome, right? Well, I am like highly sensitive to anything with corn. And that was one for me that I've worked with coaches in the past and corn tortillas were in my dinner for months and months. And I would like sometimes do okay, but not always, you know, I would still have these flare ups. That was a huge one. Um, and there were some other things that I craved that I loved 
And we found out just through working, like especially when I got into competing, that my body was craving sweet potatoes and avocados because of the vitamins and minerals that are in those foods that were helping me. Wasn't it like it was the potassium I needed? Absolutely. And so like once you start really listening and not thinking what sounds good because it's going to taste good, your whole world can change literally because you're going to give yourself what you need and then you're going to perform better afterwards. Like you're going to be able to show up in a way that you know what you're eating is not going to disrupt the way you're about to think or work or feel sitting in the stands at a ball game or like show up and feel for date night with your husband, like have patience for your children when you really can reframe it and not think like, oh, this is going to taste so good, but this is going to make me feel so good which for anyone listening, like real food does taste really good. Um, But when you can shift your focus that way, I mean, I had that aha moment over and over again. And I feel like I still do. You know, I'll be like, Callan, I'm craving this. And you're like, well, your body probably needs X, Y, Z. So we switch it up. I know a lot of people find that scenario of getting into the, you know, trends and understanding that vegetables equal weight loss. I want you to elaborate a little bit more on the findings that we found, you know, just from finding your food inefficiencies. So this is the third thing that a lot of people truly need a dietitian for. And there are sensitivities, there's allergies, but then there is also that classification of food inefficiencies that basically piece all the pieces of the puzzle together so that you're able to truly understand your digestive system from a broad spectrum. Yeah. So what were some findings that you... Well, I'm like the anomaly, right? Like you would probably, not everyone is seeing me in person, but like I did this bodybuilding competition and I have been on this fitness journey and I feel good. I feel so strong. And even to get to my leanest... Are y'all ready for this? Fruits and vegetables, I don't eat them. Like, I can't tolerate them most of the time. I'll have some blueberries in my breakfast, zucchini. It depends on what my metabolism is doing, whether I can utilize it or not. And so I just want to like tap this microphone and be like, is, you know, make sure everyone listens to this because a big, huge salad with, you know, let's say it's loaded with fruits and veggies and whatever else on it, okay? Like, honestly, the protein is about the only thing on that salad that would serve me well. Lettuce, raw vegetables, any nuts or seeds, I cannot tolerate at all. So healthy, quote unquote healthy, it's the other thing that we've talked about so many times. Healthy for me means something completely different than healthy for you because it's what my body needs. My tummy cannot handle any anything on a salad except the chicken that might be on top <laughs> and the salad dressing probably depending on what it is. And so once you like, you gave me permission to just like throw that out the window that you need to be eating fruits, you need to be eating vegetables. If they aren't making you feel well, if they aren't serving you well, they're not for you. And we even just went through this again recently. Absolutely. And there's, yeah, there are several, several clients that I have that have the vegetable toxicity, the fructose sensitivity, inability to process nuts or seeds, inability to process grains. And this is why we truly embrace the unicorn theory is the fact that everybody requires something different. You were born with natural digestive enzymes. If you're constantly eating different foods all the time, just think your body has to go into overtime and recalibrate your gut microbiome, recalibrate your digestive enzymes and your body doesn't know what to anticipate. If you are consistent with your dietary scenario, you're going to not only create that consistency for your body, you're going to increase your metabolic rate. It's going to be a lot easier for your body to lose weight. So there is a lot of things to consider broad spectrum when you are looking at the body and understanding that taking things down to total simplicity is critical for the body. It makes everything run at more of an optimal speed. Um, And understanding that 
people do have vegetable toxicities. Oh my gosh, I don't know how I can repeat this anymore. But in the past month, I've done at least 14 vegetable toxicities. Um, so we essentially eliminate that as a food group until the body is able to be healed and it can process those foods substantially better. Now, understanding that, you know, vegetables probably are a disservice to you if your cardio is lower, but understanding yeah. that, Melissa, when your cardio goes up and you're yeah. up to 40 minutes of cardio, getting ready for a bodybuilding competition, your metabolism is burning so hot that you're able to process those foods substantially more efficient. So my performance athletes, when it boils down to those individuals, they can process food substantially faster. They can handle processed foods. Um, so just bringing all of that full circle, um, you know, this is just going to skyrocket the podcast. Um, you know, the nutritional advantage is going to shed a lot of light on some myths and, um, you know, give people that light of hope and understanding that there is something that's going to be a custom fit for their body. Yeah. And I think, I mean, who isn't looking for competitive advantage, right? Like who doesn't want that? And nutrition, like it can be your superpower if you nail it. If you find the right person who understands it and gets it right, 100%.